Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, this is the second video of my in-depth Legion guide. Uh, sorry about the delay between the first and the second video. Um, this time we will try to look at a little more concrete uh, topic. Um, so we're talking about uh, fighter selection here. Um, it's quite a big topic, um, so we will have to focus on some part of it. And we're mostly talking about how to have a strong early game by picking a good opener. Yeah, um, it's a very, very crucial subject, one which is super important if you want to rank up, um, because Legion is a game where you tend to snowball. Um, so if you have a strong early game, you can get ahead and more ahead and more ahead and just uh, outscale everybody else. If you have a weak start, it's really, really difficult to make your way back into the game. So knowing how to have a strong early game is key. So I cannot stress how important it is. And that's exactly what we're going to look at here. Um, I hope that in later videos, we can also check out um, more parts of the story. So when I say story, uh, why do I say story? Basically, when you select your fighters at the start, you should try to come up with some sort of story. And the first part is which unit do you want to open with? Yeah, and uh, usually that'll be something which carries you through the first one, two, three waves, I don't know. And you will know that you will have some weaknesses. And then you think like, oh, okay, I'm weak on wave four, so which unit should I pick for that? Etc. And And you try to cover at least the first ten waves. That is what you should always try to focus on when you pick your role. Let's get into some examples. We'll be checking out a lot of examples today and uh, easiest for me is probably to just go on the lock-in screen you know, where we can just pick any unit um, and decide whether or not it's a good opener. Um, I will probably start with a very bad example just to elaborate a little bit more on when is an opener good and when is it not. Um, an opener is good if it carries you through the first couple of waves and allows you to push a lot of workers early on and not leak super hard. Um, something you will see on lower elos, I mean, it's probably maybe up to 1.6 or a little bit higher, is an opener like Butcher. Um, and why do you only see that on low elos? Because it's like pretty much a false friend, right? Um, you see it, it, it probably gets highlighted. Um, I mean, usually I wouldn't have enough gold to build a Shadow Dance unless I play cash out. Um, and I mean, this one, 150 gold, it exactly matches the recommendation. Um, it has the perfect typing for wave one. It's impact natural. Like, what else could you want, right? So people get tricked into picking that. They place it somewhere, probably use the remaining 100 gold to push some workers, and you're good to go, aren't you? Um, well, yeah, you hold wave one and you hold wave two with with ease, pretty, pretty much. Um, then you have two problems and those two problems are called wave three and wave four. Um, you are incredibly weak on those waves. And uh, whenever you see somebody opening Botcher, just send them on wave three, right? So they either cannot push any workers. They have to stay on like three or four workers at the start or they will leak pretty badly. Um, why is, what makes it so bad? It has terrible typing on three. And the second thing, why is it also so weak? It's an aura unit. And as a general recommendation, never open with an aura unit because aura units get their value from having stronger units built around them. Um, they typically have rather poor stats as in the damage per second you get per gold or the health uh, per gold that you uh, that you invest. So that makes for a very poor opener. Uh, you will have a rough way three, a rough way four, um, and it's not really worth it. So Butcher, very, very bad idea. Uh, similarly, you could say, for example, that the Antler is pretty bad. Uh, it costs even 200 gold. Um, has the same typing, you're really weak on three, you're pretty weak on four. It's just not something that you want. So instead, let's try to find out some good examples of openers. So if we're going to um, 
work our way through the list, then we should stop with the Proton. And the Proton is a... Well, a damn decent option of opening. Um, how can you do it? Um, if you're playing Fiesta, I will only mention that here on, on the side note. I will not really go into Fiesta openers here all too much because it's too difficult for beginners. But um, you can even open uh, like that and you will always leak like one creep. Um, if you push it further behind, if you put it in the last row, you leak like exactly one creep. The further up you go, the more you leak. Um, so that's one way of doing it. But um, as regular opener, this works very fine. So I have this L shape here, which makes sure that they split tank very well. So if, if we take a look at this, on, then they split tank just fine. So everybody tanking like half of the wave. Um, and why is that so great? Um, you spend 180 gold, it's not the cheapest opener, but you can uh, push a lot of workers and you full hold wave two even if you get like one or two snails here. So you can push everything you get on wave one um, into workers for wave two. And you only need an answer for wave three. Here maybe I have a peewee, I would uh, possibly go for a veteran or something, maybe add a split um, and that would probably be enough for wave three. So. They don't have any weaknesses, they deal pure damage, um, they have uh, immaterial armor typing, so you have no clear weaknesses. Um, even on wave 5, where it is super important to deal single target damage to kill the, um, the Scorpion King, they are exactly that. They are single target damage machines. So, pretty damn solid opener. Right, let's move over to the next. Um, the Aqua Spirit. The Aqua um, is all, also makes for good openers. Um, you have... I mean, if, if you only roll the Aqua without anything else to combine it with, what you can go for is a Fire Elemental. Uh, the Fire Elemental holds Wave 1 easily, with the Snail as well. Uh, wave 2, you can leave very small, but you typically don't. And on Wave 3, I need to say that's with the current patch. This might change in the future. Um, you're also pretty damn strong uh, because right now it's perfectly two hitting the creeps on wave three. So let's say somebody sent, but, but let's say wave three is coming up. Look at that. It hits it on half HP and then kills it with the second shot. Um, Fire Elemental deals pierce damage, but its combustion ability also deals magic damage. So it deals. Yes, and magic damage, and that makes it pretty strong on wave 3. However, it makes it, for example, less strong than you would think on wave 7, where you would think it has perfect typing. So beware of that. Um, the fire elemental helps you a lot during the first 3-4 waves, but you need to be careful for wave 5, because on wave 5, a hermit can absolutely ruin your life. So you will need some good tankage for that, and if possible, some single target damage. And then you have a very good, um, very good opener. Um, there are some units with which the fire element, or which with with the aqua pairs very well, um, and one of them is, for example, the flower. So let me let me actually pull that ahead. Um, we go back to wave one, and we will play um, flower, right? Welcome. Flower, you can just drop it like anywhere. It easy holds wave one. It holds that to a snail as well. Um, it's also a very good opener. It costs 130 gold. You can instantly push two workers, not a problem. Um, then for wave two, you need some kind of answer. Just usually a very cheap unit which can off tank for it. So uh, nothing too expensive. Because if I send a snail into the flower on wave two and I don't add anything, then I can I can get in trouble. It's way worse with the DT. So a DT uh, kills down the flower more quickly. But um, so this is the result. If you get snailed and you don't add, you leak everything. Right, so uh, you gotta beware of that. And now, 
That is exactly where the aqua comes in. So the aqua, if I position it like that, they're gonna split tank. Uh, and if I now receive maybe a DT on wave two, you will see something like this happening. The aqua tanks one or two creeps. The flower doesn't take the additional damage. The aqua helps with the AoE. Right? It, it improves the AoE here. And now everything just melts. And I mean, maybe we leak just the DT, but that is perfectly fine. That's no trouble. Um, we now easily hold wave three as well. So this is fine. Don't bother about the leak. Um, it's uh, it, it doesn't hurt us. Um, and you can pull push for wave three. And even on wave four, this is a very strong build. So wave five would be your your worry a little bit if you, if you receive a permit. All right, next up, the Windhawk. <laughs> this is going to be a long video. Um, the Windhawk is a very decent um, option of, uh, of opening. Um, it's typically an opener if you if you want to push really hard because it only costs 85 gold um, and you leak one or two creeps if you don't get a cent and if you don't add anything. So if, if we just start, um, you would be on five workers before wave one even starts um, and you almost hold. So this is particularly strong if you are playing as something like Cartel or Fiesta, Fiesta even better, um, because you benefit from the long waves. This is something which we need to talk about more in a different video. I don't want to overload you with information here, um, but if you need long waves, then this is quite amazing. It helps you. You have many workers uh, and it works out quite well. The problem is if you do get snailed, you leak, probably like 75% or something like that. Um, so it can be a little bit risky. It's not the end of the world. Like I said, you generate the most Mythium typically when you open like that. Um, but it does hurt you for sure. Let's check it out. So yeah, we leak 75%. Um, so it can be painful. You can try to mitigate that a little bit by adding a split. Uh, like that. You're still gonna leak to a snail, but it's it's not as terrible as before. Uh, still a very cheap um, opener if you add a tier 1 on the right. Uh, and definitely viable and not as punishing. Um, you should try to avoid this opener if your teammate might get punished by the long wave. So for example, if they play Sakura or if they play bankers, or if they are a castle, or something like that, then you should definitely avoid that. And I would also not play this opener if you're a castle yourself. Um, just because you typically want to get the first 10 waves over as quickly as possible. Uh, and this one doesn't help with that. Um, oops. All right. That much about the Windhawk. Next up, let's talk about the Mudman. Um, it's not typically an opener that I would recommend. Um, it's again like Impact Fortified. Um, it does quite decent on wave one, and you, I mean, it even deals quite some good damage on wave two. You need to be careful. Wave two deals impact damage, and this is a fortified unit, though it doesn't like solo wave two. Um, it's incredibly weak on wave 4, which I would recommend against that. But if you have, for example, Devilfish to go with it, then maybe you can make it work. But um, it's definitely one of the weaker openers just because it has some obvious weaknesses. The Mudman, however, is a very good unit to cover you on waves where you're clearly bad. Especially if um, if you're stronger the wave after because of the harden ability. So if you know, I don't know, you, you're receiving a send on wave four and you're really strong on wave five. For example, here I have Sea Dragon, right? I'm really strong on wave five. I'm an absolute god on that wave. Then on wave four, I can try to mitigate the weakness of the Mudman by using the harden ability. And then I'm a little bit less crap. And I would have a good answer here with the Sea Serpent. 
So I guess you could make it work, but you probably cannot push quite as many workers as you can do with a really good opener. Okay, next up, we're still in the first row, uh, Disciple. Um, Disciple is, I would say, workable. Um, it's not necessarily the best. So here on wave one, um, let's say we get snails. It has, I mean, it, it does have horrible typing. Um, and your 45 over value, and you will see that you might just about leak very small in any case. Um, maybe it's a little bit less if you're further behind because you have a bit more uh, mana uh, regen already. Um, but it's it's definitely okay-ish, right? Um, I wouldn't say that the Disciple is necessarily one of the stronger openers, but if you have um, a lot of expensive units and only very few cheap units, then you might want to open with an expensive unit. Or if you're Chaos and there is Magician um, in the game, then maybe going for a Disciple at the start can work out quite well and can be quite beneficial. So I would say this is like a B tier opener or something. You can make it work, but um, it's not like the strongest. Um, on wave 2, it holds no matter what, pretty much. Um, but then for wave three, for example, you do need some kind of coverage for it. Um, right, we've now made it to column two. Uh, let's check out the Bone Warrior. The Bone Warrior is one of my favorite openers, especially if I play cash out, um, because it allows you to push just so many workers right at the start. So let's um, say we want to open with the um, Bone Warrior. Then the obvious choice is to go for a Bone Crusher. Um, the Bone Crusher holds wave one with ease, uh, also to the snail. Just be aware that it's a very, very slow opener. It, it takes its time to kill the wave, um, which is very good if you and your mate have more workers than the opponents. But it's really bad if one of you has like slow opener, like Sakura, Bankers, Anglers, whatever you name it. <laughs> Um, but this like holds wave one. The question is what happens on wave two? So the easy way of doing this is to keep 15 plus 65, so 80 gold, um, to go for a fire archer on the right side. I would recommend placing it half a square below so that if you receive a DT, the DT goes to the left. So let's say here wave two. Um, and maybe we got starved on wave one. We should expect a 40 on wave two. Um, this would be my go-to if I'm afraid of receiving 40 on wave two. So I have some kind of a off tanking here. Fire Archer can tank just a few creeps. Um, it's able to regen up a little bit. Uh, my Bone Crusher gets a lot of regen value. And now the um, the Archer can just out heal that. It's, it's not a problem. Um, the half square down also has the advantage that when wave 5 is about to come, um, then the boss is pulled to the left because you have an up, uh, you have a higher split on the left side. So you call that a lower split. Um, if you're only expecting to receive a 20 or nothing at all, then you can try to be even more aggressive and only drop like... Three Bone Warriors, maybe it's even possible with two. Um, I would try something like making the split tank and go for an equal split and... I don't know. I mean, this is certainly not like the best way of doing it. Um, not the most experienced with that. But I mean... Oh, actually this one ran right now. Uh, sometimes it also runs left, that's a bit RNG. But they do some split tanking here, those units. That's perfectly fine. It, uh, it creates sufficient delay for our main bone crusher to uh, kill a couple of units. Um, and that should hopefully just be enough for the bone crusher to out heal it. Um, the problem with the bone crusher is, I mean, either you hold it all or you leak at least 50% or something, just because there is like a threshold is the healing greater than the damage from the wave. And you need to be on the right side of that threshold uh, to not leak a lot. Um, but anyway, so it's a really nice uh, opener. So wave one, 
easy. Wave two, I showed you how to get around that. Um, wave three, if you desperately need some magic damage, you can go for a fire archer. The fire archer has an ability dealing magic damage, so it helps you a lot on that. Wave four is a bit more problematic. Um, you can use the Fire Archer to off-tank, because the Fire Archer is swift, while the main Crusher is fortified. So beware of wave 4. On wave 5 you have a great tank again, and you can make the Fire Archer deal some magic damage. So it's very versatile. Um, also, if you have a big carry unit, then having a Bone Warrior or two on the board can be really, really nice. Because you can turn into Dark Mages, and Dark Mages increase the attack speed of one unit by 35% for like half of the time. Um, that's particularly great if you have something like um, a Doppelganger with um, a Butcher on it, or um, a Shadow Dancer, stuff like that. So a, a carry unit which really profits from increased attack speed. Um, I mean, almost all carry units do that. Um, so that's really cool for somewhat later stages of the game, let's say wave 10 or later, then Dark Mages might start to get interesting. But don't make the mistake of building them too early, because right now if this were a Dark Mage, I mean it would only buff like a tank and give a tank more attack speed. It's not worth it. Next up is the Gargoyle. Uh, the Gargoyle also makes for a decent opener. Um, just in itself, I mean, if, if you go for a Green Devil, for example, oh, sorry, I, I tend to put my tanks in column three. Um, if you wonder why, watch the first video. Um, so this one easy holds wave two. If you don't add anything, then um, so it easy holds wave one. Um, if you don't add anything, then on wave two, you might lead to a snail. Um, it's not like horrendous or anything. But just be aware that, um, that a small addition might be quite helpful. So the magic damage of the Green Devil um, kind of suffers against the um, arcane armor of the wave. Um, why is the Green Devil a very good opener? Um, the Green Devil is a great opener because it has an ability. This ability is um, its defense. So it takes... One reduced damage plus 35%, and this this one reduced damage is like if you see it relatively, then it's a lot early game, like during the first let's say five waves, but it gets less and less significant towards later waves. So I don't know if, if there is a unit coming in dealing 100 damage, then you don't care if it's 100 or 99, but if it's five damage, then you do care if it's four or five. So that's why the Green Devil is really strong early game. Um, like I said, Solo's Wave 1. It's Solo's Wave 2 if you don't get a Snail. So just add Tier 1 and you're fine on Wave 2. It has the perfect typing for Wave 3. It Solo's that as well unless you get a Sand. So I don't know, something like a Lizard um, or a DT can be nasty into it. Just be aware of that, that you can deal with that kind of Sand. And it also deals quite a bit of damage on Wave 5. So kind of your weakness is wave 4 and then wave 6 before it turns into a great tank on wave 7 again. So definitely a very good option. Um, the unupgraded one, the uh, the normal Gargoyle, also makes for a fantastic off tank for a couple of other openers. Um, one of the best examples for that would be a gun. So we'll take a look at the Gargoyle again when we come to the gun. Next up, the Gate Guard. I will try to hurry it up a bit because I just realized how long this video is going to be. Um, the Gate Guard is a very, very good opener. It's an aggressive one. It costs exactly 100 gold, which means you have 150 gold left for uh, training workers. So you will have five workers before Wave 1 even spawns. Um, the Gate Guard holds Wave 1 to no snail. If you do get snails, then you typically leak around 40%. It's possible for the gate guard to get lucky and um, split tank with. I mean, maybe we get really lucky and I can show it to you, but I don't think so. Um, you can get really lucky and the spawned doggo split tanks with the gate guard. So now, now it didn't happen. The doggo is tanking everything. The gate guard's tanking nothing, and now we leak like forty-two percent, um, which is not usually terrible if you're on five workers. Um, and you can try to negate that by adding something like a looter or anything on the right side. 
Um, you don't have five workers before the wave one spawns, but you get it pretty much instantly as soon as you kill like two creeps or something. So um, it's it's not a problem. Um, the gate guard is then also pretty good on, on wave two damage wise. You need a little bit of tankage for it. It's a nice damage dealer. Um, its obvious weaknesses are wave four, where it has horrible typing, and then wave eight. So those are the waves you really need to protect. Um, so wave four, wave four, right now uh, we don't have best units for that. Maybe the, the Howler, um, very good typing for that. Or you could have some rats to off tank for that, just as an example. So we definitely want to skip the Butcher. As I mentioned, that's an absolutely horrible opener. Um, let's take a look at the Nightmare. The Nightmare is one of my favorite openers. Um, it's really strong, especially if you can get some kind of life leech on it. So, I mean, here the, the game has Vamp, for example, Vampire. Um, really, really beneficial on the Nightmare. Um, the reason for that is it deals insane amounts of damage. And the upgraded version uh, even deals more damage with each attack. So if the wave takes a little bit longer, um, and it gets more and more attacks, then it will just deal so much damage that it can probably outheal the damage it takes. So, about the Nightmare. It always holds wave 1, even to a snail, and it holds wave 2, even to a snail. I don't know if you can make it leak like super small with the Lizard or something, I don't even think that happens. Your weakness is wave 3. So, if we hop over to wave 3, then what uh, we are gonna see is that I'll, I'll try to pause at the right moment. So the nightmare hit the creep twice and now the hoppers on one damage. If they were to ever change the damage from 70 to like 71, um, it would make the nightmare insanely strong because you could hardly leak it during the first four waves or something, only with the dino. Um, but that is your problem. And now, I mean, you can either try to just add more tankage to it um, to make it survive that wave, or you can try something like adding a seedling, which I have here. Clear. So what makes this one even stronger is if you can pull off something like that. Because, whoops, wrong wave. If you can add any kind of AoE, let's say a mask, um, seedling, then the Nightmare is not gonna need three shots anymore, but two shots. So now it two shots everything. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So by adding a seedling, you effectively increase the damage of the Nightmare by 50% by adding 15 gold. So that is insanely strong. It's really insanely strong. Um, you probably still want some tank, so maybe something like that, um, just to to make sure that you, you don't die instantly to some kind of set, because you should expect a send on wave 3. Now we have an interesting unit coming up next, that's the Buzz. I will disregard the kind of uh, cash out only openers. Um, the Buzz is a really nice opener if... Um, if you're playing as Fiesta, for example, so the Consort, if you go for that, um, it doesn't cost a lot of gold, it's only 105 gold, but on wave 1, you can leak very, very, very little. So, if you're just aiming for a long wave and you want to be super aggressive, or maybe just if you don't have any other decent opener, this is one which you can definitely use. Um, people will probably think you're either Cartel or Fiesta when you do that. They will mostly think you're Fiesta. Maybe you can get some free snails on wave 2 or something. Um, but you leak very little. So now there are three creeps alive and one is even killed afterwards. So this is effectively a 17% leak. That's not terrible. It doesn't really hurt you. And like I said, it's a cheap opener. They're pretty good on wave 2 uh, damage typing wise. And they are really good on wave 4. So you have wave 1, 2 and 4 covered, wave 3 is a big problem there, um, but therefore it's also very decent. Just make sure that your mate 
as something which holds wave one. So if he goes for a Wiltrum on that as well, then he can take some king damage from wave one, especially if you get snails. So if you go for that, make sure to align it with your teammate. Okay, so we have the Ranger next. Um, the Ranger is um, a unit which you should always place in front <laughs> and watch my first video. Um, and there are probably multiple ways of making this one work um, by adding something else like, I don't know, a buckler and only having a range in the buckler or something. I don't know. Um, but one of the easier openers is to just go for a Daphne. Daphne holds wave one, even to the snail. It holds wave two, even to the snail. Three is your weakness. You're again strong on wave four and it's a very good tank on wave six. Um, but then for wave 5, the typing is pretty bad. Um, it does kind of help you kill the boss a little bit with its ability. Um, and wave 7 is definitely a weakness. Wave 9 is a weakness, but then it really helps you on wave 10. Um, but just making every other unit deal more damage to the boss. So, I mean, it's 180 gold opener and it doesn't have a lot of weaknesses early on. So it's definitely a viable option. The Wilshroom is next. Uh, Wilshroom is a unit which is somewhat comparable with the, um, with the Bone Warrior, which I also have here in my role, the, the Bone Crusher, because it also has a health regeneration. And for the same reasons, it's a lot stronger earlier game, like early game than late game, just because the, the regen gets worse um, the more like the, the later the game progresses because the units typically die too quickly before they can make use of the regeneration. But we're talking about early game here. Um, the Wildstrom holds wave one to no snail. It does leak to a snail, but you can try to get around that by adding something in the split, etc. Try to make it a bit more safe. But this one is a very decent and very aggressive opener. Um, you only have uh, 95 value added, so you can have five workers before it even starts. Um, the impact damage is great for wave two as well, and you even have a great tank for wave three. Um, it certainly doesn't solo the waves, but you shouldn't expect a 95 gold unit you know, to solo anything except for wave one. Um, it definitely helps you a lot. So the weaknesses of that are wave four and five, no question. Um, but upgrading that into a cano kind of changes the whole story. Um, that gives you very good damage for wave 6. It gives you great damage and great tankage for wave 7, and still great tankage for wave 8. So then you have multiple consecutive waves where the unit is really strong and just helps you out. Um, and that's always what you're looking for. Upgrade that to a cano on 6 push a lot and your next weakness really is wave 9. Considering, I mean, that is if you have some damage for wave 8. So we already spoke about the flower, uh, especially in combination with um, the aqua. It also works really well with the harpy, for example, um, for similar reasons. So, Like I mentioned, the, the big danger of the flower is receiving something like a, um, a DT on wave 2 or something. And the Harpy would just help you clear that really quickly. So um, just try to find out cheap units which help you to um, get around that weakness. All right, we don't want to speak about these. Um, the Poly, um, the Poly in itself is not a great opener. You can try to make it work for Fiesta. I would like to skip that here. However, what I do want to mention is that the Poly is an insanely good addition to most other units. Um, so it has pretty bad typing on wave one. Magic is not exactly horrendous, but the swift armor is definitely a problem. But from there on up to wave six, including wave six, um, the polys are always pretty strong, either as a tank or as damage. So for example, wave two. Wave 2 is an impact wave. So you can turn that into a devil fish and you will have a great tank. Then wave 3. Wave 3 coming up, um, it deals great magic damage. So you can use it that as a, a damage dealer. Obviously not by itself, but it goes really well along your other units. Uh, wave 4, you need, again, a tank for the impact damage. Maybe I should turn on. So here wave uh, wave four is impact damage. Sorry, I'm looking for that one. Um, 
wave five, you have the natural armor of the wave. So you try to kill the, the boss down as quickly as possible. You have the magic damage to kill the boss as quickly as possible. Single target magic damage is really what you want for wave five. So that helps. And then for wave six, you have them tankage again. So using the transform ability of the Devilfish really helps you with pretty much any opener that you have. So a Devilfish is one of my favorite tier one units to pick alongside a different opener. So choose an opener and maybe take your Devilfish to compensate for the weak waves if it's one of the first six waves where your openers are weak. So after the poly and its upgrade versions, um, we could speak a bit about the Angler next. I would kind of like to skip that a bit. Um, Angler is not exactly a unit I would recommend to very new players. Um, it makes for slow starts because you get forced to upgrade the Angler at specific waves. So if you add an Angler on top of your um, your already existing build, so let's say you have a flower for wave one, that's the opener, then you can add an Angler to it for the Angler to collect stacks. But then you're pretty much forced to upgrade that on wave four to keep collecting stacks, and you will be incredibly weak on wave six. For that reason, you really need to know what you're doing, when to push workers, how to get the kingpin power spike as quickly as possible. And if you're still a new player, I would kind of discourage you from playing Angler at the start. Look at maybe the top game section um, for the Angler. Um, watch a couple of streamers, how they do it, and just kind of look out how they compensate the weaknesses because it's really not that easy. Um, it goes well with the steeds. Steeds can help you get the kingpin by wave six. But again, getting a, king, a kingpin so early is something which requires you to shift gold, etc. And that's not exactly something for beginners. So let's skip over that. Um, sea Serpent doesn't exactly make for a great opener by itself. Um, it is a unit you can place very well on wave four. If wave four is um, a difficulty for you, um, it can help you there. But otherwise, I will discard it as an opener. The Growl. The Growl is um, something... <laughs> okay. Most of you are probably going to say you want to have it with egg. Um, I would disagree. Um, but what a couple of people do, especially on slightly lower ranks, is that they drop a crawl on wave one. You hold wave one that way, no problem, even if you get snailed. And then on wave two, they sell the growl. You get 90% of the gold back, so that's 131 gold. And they will instead drop an egg. Um, and maybe try to add something like that behind. You're probably still on two workers. Um, if you're cash out, maybe you're on three. I don't know. Um, and you need to make the egg survive for like... Um, like um, until the end of wave three. Um, it's tricky to defend yourself against brutes. Um, if I see that, I oh, I try whatever I can to send a brute on wave three. Um, it's not always that easy if you already sent on wave one, so I push hard into that um, and try to kill it, right? Um, it's a workable opener, um, but I would not exactly encourage you to do that just because it's... Um, you will be on low workers until the end of wave three, and then you can try to catch up. During the meantime, the opponent, so if I'm red, I'm sending it to yellow. Yellow knows that he does not need to expect any kind of mercenaries until maybe wave four, so he can push like crazy. So that opener also helps your opponent in scaling if they know how to punish it. So be aware of that. Um, I would not really encourage going for Growl into Egg. It's something you can do, especially in Classic, for example, but it's not something I would consider a very good opener. Um, you can use the Growl, though, to sell it for a different um, high unit. I don't know, Shadow Dancer, Avenger, something like that. Um, it's definitely doable, but you need to make sure to catch up on workers as soon as you can. Um, Typically, the Growl should not be kept for too long because it does have weak stats, right? It, I, I think it even says so somewhere in the um, description. Can we see the description somewhere? Uh, nope. Um, it, it does have rather poor stats for the gold that you invest. 
Um, the one advantage of it is that you can sell it again for almost the same price, so for 90% of what you invested. You don't want to growl on wave 3, and certainly not on wave 7, and definitely not on wave 8. So if you build a growl, and you keep it on those waves, then you're, do so then you're doing something wrong. Okay, so tr try to sell your growl for a different unit. Then you can make it work as an opener. Okay, next up is the Priestess of the Abyss, um, or just called Poda. And I absolutely love playing Poda. It's my favorite unit by far. Um, I mean, anybody watching Doofus McDooface is gonna love the Poda. Um, so, you typically want to build her rather upfront. And the Poda, I need to say it, it's a very difficult unit. If you only just started with the game, I mean, you can try to make her work for you. But it's probably one of the most difficult units out there. Why is that? The Priestess has um, the Invigorate ability, which um, uses the mana assistance. She reaches 13 mana, she um, triggers the ability, she gets double attack speed, and for 5 seconds she's going to heal 8% of her missing health um, per second. And this is, I mean, the healing part only helps you if she's also taking damage, right? So if if we want to make this work, wave one, she easy holds that, don't worry. Wave two, you leak only to a 40 cent, any kind of 40 cent. Two snails, uh, DT, lizard, doesn't matter. Um, if you got skipped on wave one, then what you should do is you add something in the split. And I recommend going from equal split to one, two, three, down. So let's say we get that and we get two snails and we hit start. What's gonna happen is that this one um, pulls away some of the creeps and tanks it for a couple of seconds. The Poda has the time to kill like three creeps or something um, and is now able to use the regen ability. And you'll see that it gets pretty close so she's almost dying, but that means that the 8% missing health is quite a lot, right? And that's exactly what you want. You want your Poda to be close to dying all of the time. Then you're playing her right. And that's what's making her so, diff um, so difficult to play. If you screw this up and you place it incorrectly, like an equal split, it pulls everything to the right and then she doesn't cannot make use of her healing ability, and then everything collapses onto her and she just dies, then you can leak like 80% or something when otherwise you would have held. So knowing your split is super important for the Poda. Um, she's very, very strong on wave three um, and you should expect a send on wave four. Still so for wave four, you definitely want a split and you want something to tank for her. So you should add something around the circle here, so maybe here or here, I don't know. So on, on the edge of the circle to make sure that you catch a few of the creeps. Um, I would recommend something like um, walk maybe just for, for the tankage. Um, and the best unit to go with the Poda in general is the mask. Um, so let's say we have wave 4 coming up and we can go for, for masks. Um, it's insanely strong to add a mask here. Let's say um, false maiden. And then let's just do a lower split, so half a square lower on the right. Um, and we, we just add something in the back. Let, let's say that, right? And we now receive, I don't know, a fiend and a snail on, on this wave. Now we're gonna see that quite a bit goes onto the poda. Um, but it's not too much. I mean, the, the kitty tank quite a bit. I'm actually pulling too much into the kitty. It would have been better to um, to pull a bit more into the poda, so to drop it like half a square. Uh, but our poda is perfectly fine. Um, the false maiden um, is perfectly suited for taking care of this wave. Um, the next weakness would be wave six, where you should upgrade into a hellraiser. Um, in that case, it acts as a swift tank for the Poda. Uh, for wave 6, you need to raise your split, like that. And you need to put a unit a little bit closer to her, so maybe like that, or even, even half a square higher, 
just so that, that she doesn't die. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting it uh, quite right here. You wanted to, uh, you wanted to tank maybe two? Okay, she's tanking one right now, um, and th that is kind of fine, right? Now she can take care of, the, of those units, um, and the Hellraiser is going to be able to tank for the Poda. And then the Hellraiser is also incredibly strong on wave 7 now. It enrages one wave after you build it. Um, and then, like, it, it's enraged every other wave. So if you build it on wave 6, it's going to be enraged on 7, 9, 11, etc. Um, every second wave. And now it deals out um, infinite damage on wave 7. And the only thing you need a little bit is some tankage and you're fine. Your Poda can provide tankage. And the only thing I'm really weak against here is a Mimic. So if I receive a Mimic, I'm going to die on this wave. Yeah, no question. But otherwise, now the... Um, the Hellraiser is just melting the wave. My Poda is tanking, um, my my kitties are tanking, and uh, yeah, you're, you're easy cruising and can push a lot of workers. So, Poda, my favorite unit to play, but I'll admit that she's incredibly difficult to play. You have a couple of weak waves where you absolutely need to know what you're doing. It's wave six, difficult, you, you, you need to know how to split. Wave 7, the obvious weakness from, like, having no damage. Wave 9 has terrible typing. And for Wave 10, you also don't deal a lot of damage. But after that, it gets a lot better again, right? Okay, so after the Boda, um, let's skip the exact. We discussed that um, a little bit before. Uh, but we can look at the Chain Fist. Um, by the way, sorry, I just um, adjusted my UI a little bit. I noticed that uh, you were probably not able to see the health bars due to my video. Um, that should now be fixed. Um, the Chain Fist is also a unit where you can try to practice the split tanking because um, it also benefits from split tanking quite drastically. Um, the Earthbreaker has the ability Unchained Rage. So when it reaches Half-Life, it uh, attacks way, 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 way faster but hits random targets. So what you're trying to do and when you play Oathbreaker is to make it reach half health and then survive. Because then it starts to dish out a lot of damage. That's the name of the game. So the Oathbreaker holds wave 1. Um, if you get snared on wave 1, then anything can happen. Um, there have been patches where you could even leak like 100%. Um, Right now, while making this video, you typically hold or leak very small, but I cannot guarantee for anything. I mean, let's just see what happens here. Um, so we have one and a snail. Could be hold, could be 17%, could be 50%. Um, they increased the attack speed of the Oathbreaker recently, and that really helps in clearing. So we instantly killed the snail. That helps a lot with the, um, with the holding. Um, it could have been that we don't kill the snail for another 10 seconds and we just about held. But don't rely on it. Yeah, so. Might just go um, a different way. So it's now kind of decent on wave 2. It's nice on wave 3. And it's incredibly um, cool also as a tank on wave 5. But um, you should definitely have some kind of answer for wave 4. So here, for example. Elite Arch or something would be something nice to um, to combine it with because you need to keep that in mind when, when you play that um, Oathbreaker. It's also a very cheap opener. It's only 75 plus 20, so 95 gold. So again, you have five workers um, right from the get-go. And if you get snailed and you leak like one creep, then you're going to be like, hey, hooray, I... I have five workers for the longest time, so I'm the one with the most Mythium scaling the most. So, leaking small, not a problem here. Um, and you should never leak big with the Oathbreaker right now. But um, if that changes in the future due to a patch, then maybe it will be worth it adding a unit on the side. I cannot, I cannot say how, how the game is going to evolve. Now we have a um, couple of units which I would kind of like to skip. So Buckler doesn't really make for a nice opener. Um, it's way too weak on wave 3 and 4. So similar to the Butcher. It does have better health per uh, gold, but it's still it's still not amazing. Um, Steed 
is not good enough from the typing. It helps a lot on Wave 3 and you can use it to improve your, I don't know, your Poda, your Angler, a lot of units. Really, the, the, the Steed is a support unit, but it doesn't make for a good opener. Um, the next good opener here would be the Elite Archer. The Elite Archer uh, will lose Wave 1 unless you get snailed. And if you get snailed, then you should be careful because um, you can leak quite a lot. So um, it again attacks a couple of random targets. So you have one primary target which you are attacking plus three additional arrows which just hit any target. Um, in contrast to the mask, they can also hit the same target, which is why the elite archer is good at focusing down a few creeps um, like bosses. So you, you can really make it um, work as a boss killer or sniping some units. So here on wave one, I would probably add something in the split just to um, increase the delay a little bit. Um, right here, I added it as a lower split um, because then I don't need to sell it for wave five if I have it as an equal split. So now the archer can actually, oh, sorry, I was supposed to, to add a snail, of course. Um, Let's see if this holds. I'm actually not 100% sure if this provides sufficient delay. I would expect it to, uh, to do so. So now the archer can try to kill a couple of these units. Um, yeah, it was not all that successful, but half of the wave is now gone and now it has sufficient time to try and kill down the rest. So yeah, we, we actually hold this way. I mean, maybe with super unlucky RNG, you might leak here very small, but this uh, Bone Warrior is absolutely crucial. Um, add something on the side. If it's a tier 1 unit, make sure that it doesn't have the worst kind of typing. So if you just add a Polywalk, for example, then you could still leak quite decently if you get snailed. Um, so beware. On Wave 2, the Archer has fantastic typing. It clears Wave 2 um, quite easily. Um, also, if you receive a snail, for example, you don't need to add anything here. You can push. On Wave 3, you can um, use it as a tank. So the arcane um, armor is pretty damn strong as a tank. So you place like a different unit somewhere around here on the circle um, and uh, make it off tank. On wave 4, it's incredible damage, right? Um, just make sure that you don't have a dino running into you. So if you get starved wave, I don't know, 2 and 3 and you're afraid of an 80 cent, then just increase the split here to pull a dino to the right just to hold. Um, but your first real weakness here is wave 5. On wave 5, um, you need to make sure that you use something... Um, to, I mean, I'll just place some, some random units here. But... Um, like, like this, what's gonna happen? I have this one as a ranged unit on the left, and a melee unit on the right, only half a square lower. That means on wave 5 that the boss runs to the left and pretty much everything else runs to the right. And that allows the archer to try and focus down the boss by shooting all those four arrows, so the main arrow plus three additional arrows, all at the same target and kill that down real quick. So let's see what happens. Boss goes to the left, everything else goes to the right, and while having incredibly bad typing here, Pierce is horrible, Arcane is horrible, we kill the boss, we're fine, and now we can take care of the rest. Right? So, you kind of need to look out um, that you're, you're not getting screwed here. Um, you might be afraid of receiving a Hermit on wave 5, just because it's an AoE unit. However, if you position it as demonstrated here, then the Hermit doesn't really bother you because the healing of the Hermit um, doesn't help the, the mini boss all that much because you're focusing all of your damage on a single unit. So you're turning your AoE unit into a single target unit and thus defend yourself against the Hermit. That's really important to know when you play the Archer. Splitting is really important. Okay, so after looking at the Archer, um, we could now look at the Halo. The Halo is a 200 gold opener. I would discourage from using that uh, just because it's not really amazing. It's quite expensive with uh, 200 gold. You only stop with three workers. 
and the Halo um, has ramping damage, so it's incredibly weak on waves like 3, where uh, you have a lot of small units. Um, yeah, and, and then the, the Fortified um, gets punished on, let's say, waves 4 and 6, where we also need to make sure that you have sufficient tankage for it. Um, it does deal great damage on wave 6, though, but it's... It's just not exactly um, an outstanding opener or anything. So I, I would not go with that if you have other options. Um, all right, uh, Peewee. You might see some people opening with uh, Peewee and Veteran um, if they're playing Fiesta. I think it's a very weak Fiesta opener for the, uh, for the simple reason um, I, I don't actually know what, what the, the, the perfect uh, opener would be with, um, with Peewee to, to make it leak. Maybe something like that, I don't know. Um, the problem is that they deal pierce damage, and if you get snailed, the snail has fortified damage, it's very, very, very difficult for your units to kill a snail. Um, and therefore, if, I don't know, let's say this would leak one creep without a snail, then this probably leaks like 75% to a snail. Uh, and on wave 2, you have the same problem again. If I see that kind of opener on wave 1, I snail them on wave 2 and probably get a big leak out of them. So I would say it's not exactly um, a good fiesta opener. It's just too snailable. So let's move over to the bazooka, which is a very versatile unit to play. Um, with the Bazooka, you have two options. Um, typically, on the lower ranks, people go for, for the Pyro. Um, it's definitely very, very, very viable in Classics, where you cannot, or where you should not expect a lot of sense. So ever since they um, turned on this um, Income and Chill, or Auto and Chill, it's um, it, Pyro is super strong because people never um, save into you. Um, the Pyro does have some profound weaknesses though. Um, so it holds with one, two, three easily. Pretty much, I, I don't even know if it's leakable with Brutes or something. I, I would guess not. But then wave four is your first weakness. So why is the Pyro weak on wave four? Because it deals only 30% instead of 50% to nearby flying units. So. On wave 4, um, if you have the pyro, what you should expect, or what you should send into a pyro, is usually two DTs. Um, you can also try uh, to send a hermit into that. The hermit is a little bit stronger, not much, just a little bit, but it's way more punishing if it doesn't work out. So for the hermit, you get 20 income. For two dragon turtles, you get 24 income. So Sending a Hermit, I would discourage it, just go for Dragon Turtles. The one thing you should never do when sending into a Pyro is sending Brutes, because Brutes are a ground unit and they have natural armor, they just evaporate. So anyways, um, Pyro, weak on wave 4, weak on wave 6, 7, 8, and 10. So due to the number of weaknesses, um, if people really know how to send into you and how to punish you, then you got to be very good with Pyro and the other units um, which which you're adding to it to make it work. It's um, a little more difficult, I think. Um, the Zeus, on the other hand, um, I think it's way, way, way easier because it has less weaknesses. Um, so the damage, it says it's impact, but it also has the uh, magic damage ability. So uh, it, it doesn't have as many weaknesses as you might think. So wave 1 it easy holds, wave 2 it easy holds, wave 3, I mean the ability is way overkill for the small creeps, so it's not exactly the best on wave 3. For wave 4 it's a decent tank, and with the magic damage it can also kill some units. Wave 5, again you have single target uh, magic damage, which is insanely important against the boss. And on wave 6, you have it as a tank and as a damage dealer again. So, I, I think the weaknesses are less profound, especially due to the um, to, to the half impact, half magic um, hybrid damage, I'll say. 
that really helps. Um, gotta look out for wave the seven and eight, where it's just utterly rubbish. Okay, so now we made it um, to the Tempest. The Tempest also has um, decent openers um, to play. Um, that is one way of doing it for the split tanking. It's really good for the early game. Some people will also rather place it like that. Um, I think the split tanking is a little bit worse. However, it uh, makes it a bit easier to um, put a, a flying unit next to it. The upgraded version of the Tempest gives um, increased damage to flying units. So, for example, I mean, you would never want to put a Phoenix behind on the wall, but uh, this way the, the Phoenix would get um, two buffs of the Arrow Command, just as an example. Um, positioning far from ideal here. Um, the Tempests hold Wave 1, even to a Snail, they hold Wave 2. Um, your big weakness is wave four. So while they might buff your flying units, they are really bad against opponent flying units because the ability here says the, the machine gunner shoots a nearby ground enemy for 14 PS damage. Yeah, ground being the keyword. So on wave four, you have flying chicken. If you receive something like DTs, you will have a lot of trouble uh, killing any of that. Um, it's, uh, yeah, th they basically deal no damage for that. Um, you need good answers for that. Yuzora has a fantastic tank or something. Um, ideally, an elite archer. Um, elite archer is an insane combo because uh, it's also flying, so it profits from uh, from the uh, upgraded version here as well from the aerial command. So that's uh, what you need to take um, care of, especially. The next flying wave would then be wave 17. Uh, so that's again where you have uh, kind of no damage out of them. Um, APS being an aura unit, we will skip that. It's definitely not a good opener. Um, Berserker is the next um, good choice. There's not really much I need to say about that though. Um, it costs 190 gold. Um, it holds wave one, it holds wave two. It's weak on wave three. Um, the one important thing to maybe know, Welcome. you should know about the Berserker is um, it has a ramping damage, so it deals five bonus damage for each consecutive uh, attack against the same target. So it's great if it's attacking the uh, same target for a longer time. So it's really strong in wave six, for example. Uh, what you should also notice, um, I think it's a bit unfortunate that they don't have the magic damage symbol here in the description. So I. I actually didn't know this until recently, but the ability damage of the Berserker is magic damage. So it's also really strong on wave 5, where it can just focus down the boss with the ramping magic damage um, on the boss. Um, so wave 3 is your obvious uh, weakness here, where you need to have a good answer, but otherwise wave 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, you're really strong. And wave 7 is absolutely horrible, so make sure to have good answers for 3 and 7. The uh, looter, I mean, it already says difficulty hard. I would definitely sign that. Um, the looter is definitely used by a lot of good players, um, either as a cheap split unit, but then it's not really your opener, um, or in its upgraded version, um, the pack rat. But you basically don't want to have it as a fighter, but you want to have it hidden away to collect Mythium for you. And. Um, I mean, one example would be you open gate guard and you add two pack rats um, and then you hunt both of them on wave one and you only hunt one of them on wave two and you hold. But that is pretty advanced and pretty difficult. You need to play very greedy. You need to know when to expect sends um, so that you can hide the rats on the waves where you're not expecting sends and you don't hide them on the waves where you're expecting sends. If you are good enough, that you know on which waves you will receive sense. So if if you have that kind of game sense already, Akrats are your friend. Otherwise, just ignore them. Um, so I will rather move on to the Harpy. Um, the Harpy is also a pretty decent unit to open with. Um, you can have it as an addition to a different unit. So for example, if, if you put like um, a Devilfish up front and a Harpy in the back, work out no problem um, you can also put the harpy all the way in the back and turn to a sky queen 
it's a bit more of an expensive opener. Um, so I would not say it's like an A tier or an S tier opener, but it definitely works. And um, the Sky Queen is specifically good at covering leaks, uh, leaks from your teammate. So if your mate is Fiesta or something, or thinks he's gonna have a rough time early game, then the Sky Queen can really help you to just cover their leaks. Um, the walk I would like to skip because it doesn't really make for a great opener. Um, the upgraded versions are too expensive and the unupgraded version is just not that fantastic on the first three waves. Um, you can have that in combination with different units, but it does make for a good uh, uh, opener standalone. Okay, um, now we have the Desert Pilgrim. The Pilgrim, I need to say, is a unit I probably don't uh, give enough credit to. Um, it holds wave 1, it's um, very, very useful on wave 2, it has uh, horrible typing, but um, it has a healing ability. And healing, as mentioned probably three times already in this video, is strong early game. So if you have a decent unit on wave 2 which can receive the healing, it's really nice. It deals fantastic damage on wave 3, it uh, needs to be protected on wave 4, and then again you deal great damage uh, here on wave 5. So it's a great supportive unit, and it's also um, it has a couple of strengths early on, but it's not a unit which shines by itself, I would say. So you, you need good answers um, covering the, the weaker waves, um, and you need to have decent healing targets uh, to receive the healing, to make it worth. Um, I typically don't open Pilgrim at all, but that's probably just me being inexperienced with the unit and I'm not saying that you should not. If you can make it work, maybe look up um, the top games on the unit. So main menu, learn, top games, check out how the pros play that unit because it's definitely viable. Okay, so we now made it to the Sand Badger. Um, the Sand Badger is something which I don't like to see early on. Um, it's just, it's slow to kill the wave and it's uh, expensive, so it costs 190 gold. Um, you only have three workers when you place it. Um, I mean, it, it holds wave one, it has great damage on wave two, it has great tankage on wave three, it's horrible on wave four and wave five. Um, but just because it's so slow, um, I'm not a fan of it. Um, let's skip over that one. Bore, too expensive, and even if you play cash out, uh, Keep your hands off of ball, it's really not a good opener. Um, the Masked Spirit can be great in combination with different units, especially with the Priestess, as discussed before, um, but it's not great standalone. Um, if you see somebody opening with Hellraiser, then they just die on wave 5. So um, the AoE Pierce damage is so horrible on wave 5. Send a herb into that and watch them leak 100%. So that's why I would discourage from uh, opening with Hellraiser. It's also super expensive. Uh, it's just not worth it. Um, the Necromata, the next decent opener here. Um, you can uh, have two options. Um, I typically pick the Neko and give it three stacks. Enjoy. I mean, if you can't remember how many, it's exactly that you have 150 values, so you're plus minus zero. Uh, two stacks doesn't hold wave one, three stacks holds it also to the snail. Um, that's very decent. For wave two, you can just add one stack and you're fine. Um, and on wave three, it's also an amazing unit. Just be careful, the Nekomata is a unit which is very susceptible to brutes. Um, so if you receive a brute, um, you should have an answer to that, um, otherwise you might get screwed. Uh, also on its strong wave, so wave 3, or even wave 7, when you have um, all 7 stacks. With 7 stacks, your Necromata gets a healing ability, so it always uh, heals for 1% of its max health when it kills something. The Brute slows down the attack speed of the Neko and deals a ton of damage to the Neko. So, Except for just taking more damage, it also kills fewer units and heals less. So that's why Brutes are particularly strong into Necromatas. Um, but still, that's very decent. Um, what you might also see is that people open with a split. That's uh, also viable. Um, 
go for something like that you're again 150 value um if you don't add the uh, the stack then it's like a fiesta opener um but uh this one works out the idea of why you might want to have a split is that it's less susceptible to brutes and you already have a split but um i mean pick your poison whatever you prefer i prefer having one akamata okay so let's move on um the Infiltrator is also very great as an addition. Um, it's not great on its own. Um, the upgrade costs um, 280 combined, so you cannot build it on wave one. Um, and the Infiltrator by itself um, has very poor typing on the first two waves. Um, but it deals good damage on wave three, and it's a great tank on wave four. And you can use it to deal single target damage, uh, magic damage on wave five. So it's uh, great if you have something good on wave 1 and 2 and you need answers for 3, 4, 5, then the, the Infiltrator is your friend and it can even tank on wave 6 for you. So it's um, better for the not very first waves, but right after. Um, Eternal Wanderer. I sometimes see people open with that. Um, I'm not a fan of it. Um, it has decent typing, but the problem with the Wanderer is it dies and then it takes like a second or one and a half seconds and then it respawns and it kind of comes back as a damage unit um and if you have the wanderer plus one different unit so let's say you have the wanderer and some carry dps like the nightmare then the wanderer attacks first right it dies all the units then start attacking your nightmare while the wanderer is only starting to get back to life so you need, when you play Wanderer, you need to make sure that you have a solution from, uh, for getting your, your carry units killed. Um, and that's not exactly easy. They make for great delays. If you add Wanderer in the split, that's absolutely fantastic. But I'm not a fan of having that as an opener. I specifically like Wanderers on Wave 9 and onwards. That's um, where I think they definitely have a good uh, role to play. The Zora is much more viable early on. Um, it's a good tank um, and it has an ability of um, avoiding damage. So it has a dodge ability here yeah, Nimble Feet. It has 25% chance to dodge um, each incoming attack. Um, that means while it has 1510 health, you can kind of increase that by 25% because that's how much damage she's able to absorb because she will dodge 25%. Um, therefore, if you can get some healing on her, especially from um, a sea dragon, because a sea dragon is single target healing, um, that is particularly effective healing. So a combination of Yuzora and sea dragon, that can cover all first five or even six waves for you if you just upgrade um, upgrade the life by uh, upgrade the life banner um, on wave five. Um, so Yuzora holds wave one and two. Um, it uh, is crazy good on wave three. Um, the Sea Dragon as well. Then you have fantastic tankage on wave four, and it gets even better through the healing. Um, the Sea Dragon kills wave five. I don't know. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing on the first five waves. This combination. So let's move on. I almost made it to the end. Uh, I apologize for the insane length of this video. Um, uh, the, the seedling is one which we skipped right now. Um, it has two kind of openers you can play with it. Um, one of that is the Sakura, which is a decent opener if you are fine with playing slow. Um, that is, I mean, you should not play that if your mate is Fiesta or playing something ultra aggressive because his leaks might kill your Sakura. You always want her to live because um, she gains a stack uh, whenever she survives a wave. And therefore, um, it's super crucial that she survives as often as possible. Maybe you can accept her dying on wave seven, but otherwise try to keep her alive as much as possible. Um, so that's one option. I would say it's good with Castle, for example, where you get a bit of free scaling at the start where you're pretty weak. 
Um, and then after wave 10, um, your castle power spike kicks in. So that can work out quite well. Um, it definitely has its weaknesses though. Um, the Borough Pixie is great for Fiesta only, I would say, at this at the current state of the game. Um, you can either do like an opener like that, to leak maybe two creeps, or you can try something like that. Um, it's different with each patch. So I think on some patches this holds and some it does not. I'm not sure what the current state of the game is. Um, I think this leaks like one creep to uh, to no snail. The Glora Pixie is particularly good for Fiesta because you try to leak with Fiesta. And the Chloropixie gives you additional Mythium when it dies. So you actually get a second benefit from uh, from leaking. But this opener, only do it if you're Fiesta, because it's it's not really viable for, for non-Fiesta builds. Okay, we almost made it. Uh, slime Siren. Um, the Slime Siren, um, or sli Slime Lava, I mean, the unit is Slime Lava, the upgraded version is Slime Siren. Um, you can make a Slime Siren as an opener, and it works quite well because uh, she holds the first three waves, um, and it's not that expensive for a unit holding three waves, to be quite honest. Um, I'm not sure what the breakpoints would be on wave three, so maybe it could lead to a Brood. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, just sandbox it and, and give it a go. Um, but otherwise, you're pretty safe on those uh, couple of waves. Starting wave 4, you have a few problems coming up. Um, you always, always, always need to make sure that your Slime Siren reaches max mana. That is rather easy early game, and it gets increasingly difficult towards the later stages of the game. And that is why Slime Sirens get way worse late game. Like, really way worse. Um, you don't want to build Slime Sirens at later stages of the game. Those are early game units. Um, <laughs> With the slime, try to have an answer for wave 4, um, where it deals no damage and the impact is quite strong against its um, uh, arcane. And particularly wave 5 can be a problem. So that's where you just need answers for. And why I don't like to open Slime Siren is because it's one of those units where you either leak everything or nothing, pretty much. And that is, uh, let's say your Slime Siren reaches 15 mana and then dies, then it only spawns one blob and uh, that's not a lot. If you if it reaches 16 mana, then it spawns three blobs. So the impact of living for one more second is outrageously big. So if you play Slime Siren, know your breakpoints, know your splits. You need to know how much you can take on which waves and make her survive for long enough. Not easy. You need to practice a bit with that, and it's um, it's a high risk, high reward play. Okay, we only have very few left. Um, let's take a look at the casket next. Um, the casket is uh, one of the newer units. It might have been in the game for maybe a year now, um, and it's a tank which solos wave one. However. There's a big however, um, you need to be very careful with that. So if you're on wave one and you don't add anything and you get snails, this is what's gonna happen. Oops, sorry. I still had some sense from earlier on. So wave one, one snail, um, the casket, Deals an AoE, hits all units, uh, it's not killing anything so far. And I can tell you, it's pretty much gonna stay that way. So now it kills the one snail and you leak 100%. Um, that's pretty much game over on wave one. So instead, you need to make sure you add something. I'm actually not sure if a loader is enough. Uh, let's just give it a go. But usually a tier 1 unit somewhere on the side where it either split tanks a bit or deals a little bit of damage. That tends to be enough. Um, maybe I should have added it behind. Let's actually see how this works out. Um, but it's just important to give it time to fire off one more spell. So it fires off a spell. There you go. I mean, it did say 83%, but realistically you leak nothing. The opponent's get no gold. You're fine. Um... 
that works. Um, it's probably a bit safer if you place it behind so that it can just deal a lot more damage. Um, and you're fine. So that is a good opener. Um, but the worst opener is something like that. That's what you sometimes see. That's 230 value. It holds wave 1, it holds wave 2, it holds wave 3, I guess. Um, and it's really strong in wave 4. But it's such a slow opener. Go for the small casket and add one tier 1 unit to it, as shown here. Um, then it's a decent opener, but make sure to add the tier 1 unit. Otherwise, you get screwed. Okay, we've now made it to the gun. Um, the gun is a very special kind of, um, of unit, one which also needs quite a bit of practice. And I'll be honest, it takes practice which I don't have. Um, the gun is my least played unit, but it's definitely a very, very good unit, strong unit, um, and also a very viable opener. And you will see some very high rank players um, play the gun a lot. So if you want to learn how to play Gun, um, maybe watch Shadow Wings when he streams. Um, he plays Gun <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and he's also very good at it. Um, or I think Itsu also showed me quite a, a few things um, about how to play Gun. So I prefer to have my Gun 1 off center. Um, just personal preference. There are multiple ways of doing it. Um, I don't want to go too much into details. Um, if you place the gun right up front, then you need to place your tanks like, I don't know, here, for example, um, to have um, a split tank going on, to have your gun tank a little bit, uh, not too much. Um, and this placement is particularly good on range waves. So on wave um, 8 and 11, the gun is closer to the, um, the creep and can shoot it. Um, you will also see some players um, placing the gun here on the side. And that is better if you want to make it split tank with a ranged unit. So you could put um, a Poda right behind it and they would, um, like the, the Poda would uh, take most of the damage. Um, it's it, it has other weaknesses. It's not as good on ranged waves because it's further away from, from the wave. So it, I mean, what I'm trying to say is um, there are different positionings. Go for a basic one, put it up front if you're if you're still learning how to play gun, um, and look out for something. Uh, so one of the best combinations to have is like a, a gargoyle for wave three. You place it down here, um, and even if you get like double snails, you leak very very little. Um, the gun holds wave one. It can leak a little bit to double snail on wave two, but it doesn't hurt you all that much. Um, then on wave three, you need an answer right to use it. Kiwi, Gargoyle, whatever, um, it's definitely fine. Uh, wave 4 deals great damage, wave 5 might be a bit rough, wave 6 is your weakness, where you also need to know how to adjust your split. But um, afterwards, try to go for the Vulcan Cannon, so the upgraded one, to have it uh, maybe by wave 9, then you easy hold wave 9, you easy hold wave 10, you're really strong there. Um, so that makes for... Um, for a good opener, but I will admit it's not my strength um, and uh, try to find a streamer where you can learn it from. That's sadly not me. Um, all right, but let's move on to the next. And when I say the next, I'll actually say the last. Um, Aula is not really an option for uh, for having an opener. So going for a Sunfang, I would discourage that for sure. Um, so we disregard that. Um, Banker, I need to say, um, is the most recent addition right now um, while I'm making this video. And um, I find them mostly, mostly a troll when played in ranked. Um, people are starting to make them work now. Um, you can open with one banker or even with double banker, um, but it's probably not the most difficult to counter. When people play banker, they have very few workers, they overbuild a lot. Uh, you need to know how to punish overbuilders, um, so that's a, a bit more advanced. But um, I don't like bankers, I don't play them at all so far. That's definitely going to change um, in the future, but I will skip them for now. The Treant, however, is a very interesting opener. It's going to be the final one. 
uh, for this, I don't know, six hour video which I'm making here. Um, it holds wave one, even to a snail, 100%, and it only costs you 100 gold. So you can push three workers and you will be absolutely safe. So that's quite the difference to um, a gate guard or even an oathbreaker. So this is the cheapest unit which guaranteed holds wave one to snail. Um, you now have two options. Um, you can push to five workers instantly and just add some tankage for wave two. Note that the treant perfectly two shots wave two at the current patch if they don't nerf it. Yeah. Uh, therefore, you do not need to add any damage for wave two. You need to add delay so that it lives longer on wave two. Um, something like a devilfish is uh, is ideal. Yeah. Um, I would not go for something like aqua spirit because that just deals damage which doesn't which you don't benefit from. Um, so going five workers and adding something on wave two, perfectly fine. You can also only go for three workers and turn it into a tree of knowledge. Um, it's a bit of a slower opener. Um, it holds wave one, of course, wave two, wave three, wave four. Um, on wave five, you need to add something because otherwise you leak 100% to a brute. Um, and then you have a couple of weak waves coming up. The so wave six is weak, seven and eight and 10. Um, so you you need a couple of answers and you're, you're a bit slow to start. So you only have three workers when wave two starts. And that's not a lot. And that's why I would say going for the tree of knowledge is less good than just going for the tree and going to five workers and adding something. Gives you more aggression, more snowball effect, and just helps you helps you for longer. Right, so this video escalated a lot more than I was expecting it to. Um, I probably looked twice as tired uh, than I looked at the beginning of the video. Um, I do hope that you learned um, a lot from this. Please let me know if there's anything I should uh, elaborate on more. And keep in mind, this only explains um, how to pick one part of your role. So I try to focus on which unit should you rely on as your central unit to pick for the first couple of waves. And um, in upcoming videos, we will also look at um, synergies. We'll look more deeply at synergies. I tried to cover that a little bit here as well um, and how to make a strategy all the way to wave 10 um, at least. Um, at that point, you typically try to make use of your reroll. Um, maybe you cannot always plan out all that long, but that's something we're going to practice here together. Um, I just hope you had a fun time here, learned a lot. It's going to help you uh, gain some ELO uh, and I wish you the best of luck in your next uh, ranked games. I hope you kick some asses and uh, to see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.